All right, first and foremost, we give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, Yahweh Shai. All right, we back at y'all with another Friday night class. Uh, tonight, we got another uh, special debate night tonight. Uh, what's the topic? Who we, Let us know who we're going to be debating and what the topic is going to be tonight. Deacon. Uh, my main man, uh, good brother, Naquam, Naquam, uh, Naquam Bunyasharala. The brother, the brother, I'm gonna let him come on and uh he should be entering the room pretty soon. Brother out the Midwest, I believe, Kansas City. Uh, been doing some dialogue with, with him for uh, some time now. So we thought we'd come and reason with the scriptures and uh hash hash it all out. Yeah, uh just so y'all know, or everybody make sure. When y'all come into the chat, give us some feedback on how we sounded. Let us know we sounded good. Our audio was right. We're trying something different today. So just let us know the audio is right in the chat. Somebody check the chat and make sure we're getting good feedback as far as the audio and the spirit. Uh, in the meantime, the brother Naquam just hopped on. Shalom Naquam. Naquam, right? Shalom Naquam. Can we hear him? Salaki, you talking about? We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Now he's muted. You muted yourself. You got to unmute yourself and then try speaking. How, how, how do you unmute it? I want to say, I think I can I unmute him. Let me see. No, nah, I can't. I can only unmute him if I unmute him. Right. Keep on the board set, uh, audio and video on point. All praise. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. Yeah, Naquam, are you on your laptop or your phone? Laptop? Yeah, you mute it. You mute it. You got to unmute yourself. Hmm. Wait. Yeah, somehow you muted your you muted it. What does he do to unmute it? All you gotta do is go go right here to the top microphone. It'll be it'll it'll highlight in red. Yeah, yeah. Go up to the top. You'll see so a it's, microphone. It's just got wider. Yeah, you should see a microphone symbol. Once you put your cursor up there. The different icons will pop up. Really? Yeah, it should have the the contact symbol, the mic the microphone, symbol, the camera, the video. And then when you're trying to click it, it ain't clicking. Okay, then that's what you want to do. Right, so. Yeah, if that don't if that don't work, then yeah, I was gonna say log off and log back in. Yeah, to get get come back in. That might work for you. You click out and come back in. Uh, click out of it. Click out of it and then come back in. So you're gonna close all the way out and then go back to the link that I uh, that I sent you.
No. No, we still can't hear you. You don't got no speakers or mic plugged into your laptop? Yeah, you might have to unplug those. Maybe that might be it. Yeah, you need to check his settings. His settings. Check your settings. See what his microphone is selected to and whatnot. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> You got two laptops? That live. Yeah, we live. Is he, is he live on that? On the, on the, I believe so. On the muted mic. Mm -hmm. Bear with us. He's trying to figure it out. A different laptop than another box. Another box. Sure. Laptop. Yeah, yeah, come. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. That other that other that other laptop you had had you clear. You said it had me clear. See you though. Okay, yeah, that's that's a better laptop. That's why I wanted to use that one, but oh well. Yeah, it had you powered up. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so All yeah, right, we're, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna let you give a brief introduction for and 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 what you believe as far as what we're gonna talk about tonight. Just a quick quick and brief synopsis and then let's go in let's go in <clears throat> all right uh well basically i believe that esau is not the white man um i believe the 12 tribes are negro um scattered throughout the four corners of the earth and i believe that babylon is not in america at least um specifically mecca okay with that being said Let's segue right into it. Um, where is, I asked you this before, I'm just doing this for the crowd's sake and the brothers in the, in the class that wasn't here. Um, where is ancient Babylon? Spoken of in Ezekiel, Isaiah, the prophets and contemporaries of that time. That's in Iraq. In Iraq. Uh. And now you say that Babylon in Revelation is Mecca? K 
Scott. Um, how do you how do you draw that conclusion when those are two different geographical locations? Okay, uh, let me let me see. Okay, well, first we gotta understand. Um, we agree that Babylon is a um, a spiritual place, also, right? Absolutely. When you, when you look at Babylon, um, let me look at my notes. Um, <clears throat> uh, the crescent and the star in Babylon, that date salt goes all the way back to Nimrod, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the crescent, uh, the crescent moon is a Babylonian symbol. Right. Okay. So, uh, what I'm getting at is Islam. When you look at Mecca, Revelations, um, it describes Mecca, or not necessarily Mecca, but Babylon. It says that is gathered to Babylon. Correct. I know in Habakkuk it says that they heap it unto themselves all nations. Right. Yep. So when you look at uh, Mecca, that's what they do is they heap to themselves all nations every year. You know, the, the Muslims, they call it the Hajj. You know, so and, and then they, they well, we know what they do. They circle around the cobblestone. They bow down, kiss it and, and all of that. So. Well, I'm getting, right, well go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I want you to finish your point. Okay, no, I, I was just gonna, uh, as far as that crescent moon and the star, we know that all um, six empires dealt with that, right? The Egyptians, the Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, the um, Greeks, and the Romans. You're it's, saying well, that all of those civilizations had that crescent moon symbology that they utilized? Okay, well, let me get Acts uh, chapter seven, um, verse forty-three, because a lot of a lot of Israelites use this scripture to say that the um, that shield of David. That's what this scripture is talking about. Um, but right here in Acts seven forty-three, it says, uh, "The tabernacle of Moloch, the star of your god Remphan, figures which he made to worship them, and I will carry you away into Babylon." <clears throat> Let me get another. Um, hold on one second. Hold on. What what, what did y'all say? Uh, it says what what is it? Forty two. Forty three. Forty three. It says carried you away beyond Babylon, not sure. to Babylon. Oh, okay. Kyle, my bad. My bad. Um, all right, so yeah, throughout throughout all the years, the name changes, uh, or the names changed, but the symbol stayed the same. Dealing with when we dealing with Babylon, um, because we know that Babylon means confusion, which is which is also a key into why uh, you know with the Arabs, like I, I was watching the um, debates I did with Nazi being a mixed nation, that's that's going into more confusion. As far as you know the mixing of the nations. I'll ask you this. What okay. are the four be what are the four beasts in Daniel the seventh chapter? Uh the four beasts in Daniel the seventh chapter, let's get it. You can start at uh uh, verse 3. Okay. <clears throat> All right, 7, Daniel 7 and 3, it says, uh, If four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one from another, the first was like unto a lion, and we, we know that that's the Babylonians, 
and had eagle wings. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another oh, beast second quick. like unto a bear. One second, I want to um, I want to make sure that we are getting a proper understanding. When it when it says a lion, that's Babylon. Then when it says the eagle's wings, that's referring to the Assyrians. Then when the wings getting plucked plucked off, that's talking about the Babylonians triumphing over the Assyrian. So we can understand it's really okay. a reference to the neo the neo uh, uh, Babylonian slash Assyrian Empire that the Babylonians became the chief of. You know, so we could get full grasp of all the the, uh, the feathers getting plucked off and and uh, whatnot because that's dealing with the griffin and that's what they used uh, in Assyria and whatnot. But go ahead. Kind on, kind on. Hey, I didn't know that. <laughs> you just taught me something. All right, so. Um... It says, second like unto a bear, we know that that is uh, the Persians um, or the uh, Persian Medes. It says, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said, thus unto it arise, devour much flesh. Uh, I, I believe the interpretation that raised itself up on one side is, is the Persian Mede Empire became the Persian Empire. Um, so yeah. verse six it says, "I beheld and lo, another like unto a leopard, uh, uh, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl." We know that that's the Greeks and the four generals that you know he um, <clears throat> he gave dominion to. So verse seven it says, "After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly." And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. <clears throat> right here, because I, I know y'all say it's wrong. And now, on this regard, I'll have to agree with Nasi with what he said about that. I'll, I'll agree that Rome is in there. Um, uh. So when it mentions the four beasts, the fourth beast with ten horns, uh, you're saying that Rome. What what is the fourth beast to you? Well, well, okay. Here, let me uh, let me get. Um, I, I know y'all don't subscribe to um, the Book of Jasher, but uh, I'll, I'll read it. You know, because there might be somebody out there that does. Um, so, Book of Jasher, chapter ninety. Verse one, well, actually, let me. I'll skip right down to verse seven. First, let me ask you this: Who who are Chittim? Who is Chittim? The people of Chittim. Chittim or Kit? You mean Kittim? That's um, what is that? Is that Cyprus? I could be mistaken. But I believe that's those are the people of Cyprus. The inhabited, the indigenous peoples of Cyprus. That's somebody can look that up for me. Cyprus. Look up Chittim, C H I T T I M. Chittim, Chittim or Chittim, which are the people of Cyprus, right? The island of Cyprus. Yeah, that area there in Europe. Those are Japhetic people. Yeah. Right. Those are the children of uh, of Yavan or, or Javan, some, some yeah, yeah. pronounce it. Um, right. So w would you agree that the Javanites were the Greeks? Um, It depends on what time period you're talking about. I would say that the Javanites were the original Greeks, emphatically. Um, okay, well, what I'm getting at is the children of Chittim being wrong. So it says right here in verse 7, um, And the children of Chittim continued their pursuit of Edom, and they smote them with a great slaughter, and Edom became subject to the children of Edom, or Chittim. And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom, and Edom became under the hand of the children of Chittim, and became one kingdom from that day. That's another mistake I believe Nazi made when, when y'all asked him how did the Arabs get to look and how they look now. It's because they did mix with the Romans. They became one kingdom. <clears throat> well, I would have to accept, I would have to believe that the people of Chittim were white people when archaeology defies that. You said Chittim are white people? No, I said... If in order for me to accept that as an answer, I would have to believe that the people of Chittim were white people, and archaeology defies that. When you take a look at the indigenous peoples of that area, the Etruscans, the Minoans, etc., these were all 
black people. And these are the oldest dated people who lived in that area. And the archaeology says that. So that's why I can't accept that those people were white people. And that's how Arabs and the, I can't accept that that the people of Europe were white and the Arabs or the Edomites were Arabs. And that's how they got lightened up, because it, it defies all historical evidence. Well, what do you have any sources? Uh, I can show you the same same sources we showed Nazi. Um, Go. As we see the depiction of the Etruscans, which would be him in the middle. This is dealing with how when white people started coming up into Europe and how they started to vary as you see the different colors that they're depicting these people as and the different, uh, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the encounters, but the, the, the rivalry that they was having amongst each other, the Etruscans, as we can see. Okay, uh, well see, my, my question then, because, and that's that's one thing me and one of the Ox here always get into it with about is, um, the you know, he'll, he'll ask me how, how did Jack has become white? Because we know that Noah's children was black, and then so, and I would ask him the same question to Edom: How do we know? How did he turn white? So in Genesis twenty-five, it says he was red. Let's let's run with the idea that Esau was white, which I don't believe. Um, but he, and then the the the, the camps. When I say the camps, the four major camps, um, they stress that Edom um, uh, <clears throat> was born red all over like a hairy garment. And then they also stressed that he was the only person in the world that was that color. So if he had, if he married Ishmaelites and, and Canaanite women, then how, how would his seed all of a sudden just become white? It happens uh, through, through time. Uh, it's, 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 very, it's very simple. It's something called albinism. If you understand albinism, albinism, can have a generational plague on people. I've seen generations of families who are all albino. It's not far-fetched. It's a pretty regular recurrence. Mm, but well, but see, where in the Bible does it says that he's albino? Because uh, we know Laban when it, when it describes his birth and that that his skin color at birth. Skin color at birth. Well, and see, that's one thing I don't, I don't believe either because it says, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they now, right here, the whole time when I read it, like, what does Esau mean? It means well, wasted. I'm positive. Can you pull it up in your blue letters? What, with the word Esau? I can pull it up, the etymological word. I can pull up its root word in the blue letter and show you what it means. You, what you can't do is pull up a, a root word or any word in the Hebrew language that's even relatively related to being hairy and show it having any relation to the Hebrew word Esau. Uh, the word for okay, hairy, the word for hairy, the same word that's used in Esau came out red all over like a hairy garment is the word seer or shayar. That means hairy. That's was their capital, Mount Seir. Because as they grew older, it says Esau was a hairy man. But at his birth, he was red all over like a hairy garment. It ain't got nothing to do with being hairy. That that the ideology that Esau means hairy, you can't show that anywhere in, in, in the Hebrew language that the word Esau means hair. Um well, see, okay, let me see. Right here, I don't, I don't know if y'all can see it, um, and then I'll, I'll go into the see it, but it it does say it means hairy. No, I, I, and like I said, I said show me how that means hairy. Th this is the thing, brother. We can't solely rely on what the strong says. You have to be astute in the Hebrew language. The strongs is good, and the strongs is a good starting point, but 
it defies all logic and it defies the Hebrew language to deduce that the word Esau means hairy when there's every single word that means hairy in Hebrew is totally unrelated to Esau. I'll show you. Let's go through it real quick. Put a screen share back on. All right. So let's take a look at the word here. The word here. I'm going to take a look at it in Hebrew. Right? Take a look at the word here in Hebrew. And as we're going to see, so we have all these words. Let's see if any of them are relatively related to the word Esau. Um, we have uh, Dala'ah, Sha, Marat, Nazar, uh, Shaiba, Shayar, 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 Shayara. Nothing is even relatively sounds like the word Esau or Aisha or Aishashwa. You don't hear any of that, anything even relatively related to that. But we know the capital of Edom is Mount Seir. And we know the word here for Harry or Shayar. Now watch this. I believe it's right here, Strong's 8181. This is what Hebrew word Shayar. And it's called uses. Uses here, Genesis 25, 25, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. So if his name Esau means hairy, and they mm -hmm. named it because of what he was, but the word for hairy is seer, then why didn't they name him seer? Why did they name him Esau? Huh, Don't make yeah, I just, I just seen that. Um, okay, so, so what, my, what my question then would be is, Proof that it means waste of the way is he because I, I hear all the camps teach it, but is is there a word? Can you find me a word that, that yes, sir. I'm gonna show it to you right uh, now? I'll show it to you right now. Is it a Salaki? I gotta get the Hebrew number for it real quick. Uh, that's a waste. That was a waste. Give me one second. <clears throat> yeah, all right. Uh, I'm going to grab it for you real quick. I just got to find it. Um, he saw boom. Where is it at? Strong. Oh yeah. I thought that was in there. No, no, it's it's, it's you, no. No, yeah, that's why I, I got to take you to the word. Let me see here. Yeah, where is this at? One thirty. Hold on. Fuck, where I got this at? Let's see how I use this against. Hmm. One second. Let me see. <clears throat> right here, so like it. What strongs is it? I believe it's, it's this one. It's just the eye in front of this one. Let me pull up Esau. Right here. Yeah, Shaw, that's it, that's it. Uh -huh. Shaw, that's it. Here we go, that's it. No, that's not it. That's not it. Right here, Esau. Okay, boom. So it comes from this word. 
Esau come from this word. I saw, as it as it is in the Hebrew, I saw, as it is here, Sha'a. This is the root word. Okay. That's dealing with desolation, the crash, or to be wasted. That's what this is about. So it's really prophetic. Like if you go, if you take a look at Genesis, what is that, 36? When it starts naming all the descendants of Esau. Every descendant of Esau has a name associated with destruction. Let me, let me read this. Go ahead. Jeremiah 49 and 10. But I have made Esau bare. I uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. Meaning he's wasted. I mean, he is wasted. So that's letting you know that right there. But uh, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to get into Esau. Yeah, because look, we got to wait because we jumped into Esau when we was we didn't even get past Babylon. So we got to do everything decently and in order. The initial questions had to do with Babylon. So if we could please get back on the topic of Babylon, and then we could come to Esau. Uh, yeah. It ain't that many questions. I want to know uh, who the fourth beast is. Plain and plain and simple. Give me a plain and simple answer for who the fourth beast is in Daniel seven. Uh, that's actually kind of hard to answer. Like I said, Rome is going to be going to do with it, but, um, the, the, um, have you guys heard of the Neo Ottoman Empire and what they're trying to raise up over there in Syria? That's what ISIS is all about. They're trying to raise up the Ottoman Empire again. So you believe that ISIS is an actual organization? Well, see, this is why I said that America or Rome is going to have something to do with it also. Can I because ask you a question? I'm, so you're you saying that ISIS is going to raise up the Neo-Ottoman Empire? Not necessarily ISIS. I'm just saying that's a tool. So uh, my question is, what? where is the Ottoman Empire, the ancient Ottoman Empire, where were they located? In Turkey. You heard me? Which is where, uh, when when Rome fell, that's oh, where, where the capital located? of Rome, huh? The Ottoman Empire. Where was the Ottoman Empire located? The Ottoman Empire in Turkey. In Turkey, right? In Turkey. So ISIS means the Islamic State of Iran and Syria. So I want to understand how the Islamic State of Iran and Syria is trying to reestablish uh, an empire that didn't have anything to do with them and is based somewhere else that is not a place that's in their interest according to their name. Okay, uh, as the beginning, one more time. Basically, the ISIS, their name means the Islamic State of Iran and Syria, right? So if, if the Ottoman Empire, if the Neo-Ottoman Empire is being raised up out of Turkey, I just want to understand what interest the uh, Iranians and Syrians have in establishing an empire out of Europe. Okay. Um, let me ask you this and then I'm going to pull the scripture. Um, Syria, Syria or any of that land over there, what, which, which empire during the time of, uh, when, when, when we was over there? You said what? When we was over there, the Roman Empire. In Syria? Okay. Well, um, I mean, we in Syria for uh, us going to Syria has been since the Babylonian Empire, so. Right. Right. That's that's what every, I was Every doing. empire is ruled since we've been over there. Right. So right here in Revelations uh, chapter 13, verse 1, it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw beasts rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So, like, right there when it says, uh, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet was like a bear. This empire is going to encompass all of those lands that those previous empires ruled over. Wait, so let me ask you this. The beast in Revelation, 
has not even came to fruition yet? That the beast in Revelations? Uh, well, let me see. Uh, let me find a verse. Uh, verse 5 it says and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months that's 3 and a half years so no it hasn't came to pass because this okay, thing so I'm going to read I'm going to read you I'm going to read a scripture real quick Revelation right. chapter 17 I'm going to start at verse 8 listen up the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. So John is saying that this beast has existed, this beast is existing, and this beast will exist. Meaning it pre-existed him. Right. Right. Well, Ty, okay, Ty, okay. I didn't understand the questions. My bad. Um, so, all right, so it says, the beast that thou saw as was and is not, out of the bottomless pit. Well, and that's going into what I was saying before about the Ottoman Empire. And then they, but uh, they the fell. Ottoman Empire does not pre exist John the Revelator. You said what? The Ottoman Empire does not pre exist John the Revelator, who at the time when he gave the prophecy said this beast was, meaning it pre exists him. Okay, Kai, Kai. All right, I gotta admit. <laughs> what are the seven what are the seven heads? Uh, the seven heads. Uh, let me hold on. Let me see because I got my notes on that one. Um, uh, the set the seven heads would be the empire, all of the empires, all of the major empires. What what are these major empires? Could you name them? Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the uh, the the Greeks, the Romans, um, uh, and then the, the seventh one. Um, oh, you named four. Six. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Um, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome, and then so that's six. Syria, and, uh, Babylon, Persia, Greece. Rome. And you said Greece. Greece. And what would what, what, what would be the seventh one? The seventh one, um, I see that's what I'm trying to find exactly where it's at in my notes. Um oh, damn. Okay, let me see. Uh, let me, shit. let me, uh, do you think you can get the seventh one? You can take, you can take your time. Cause I was going to read the scripture after you find it. Okay. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking through, you remember all that shit I sent you in your inbox? Yeah. I'm bad. Yeah. That's what, well, that's what I'm looking through. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. So you said Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and then there's one more. Uh, hold on, let me see. Okay, that's what it was. All right, seven here is Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and the seventh is the Ottoman. The Ottoman Turks? Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire, okay. So, uh, I wanna read, I wanna read uh, verse 10, Revelation. 17 and 10 it says and there are seven kings the seven that you, the seven that let's just take the seven that you name five are fallen which which one of these five have fallen in john's time further proven that this beast already came to existence which one of hey, hold on rephrase the question do you mean Previous to or, or from John's said, time and before no you, you said you said this beast hasn't 
hasn't uh came to power yet. We're we're saying this beast has came to power. You're saying it hasn't come to power. So I'm asking you, what does Revelation 10 mean when John says seven of the heads, um, five out of the seven have fallen already? In his time. In his time. From well, and see, that's what uh, in, uh, I didn't know if, if, because I'm trying to understand the question. Or do you mean from from all of the? Um, because when I, I'm just gonna go into the same thing before the five kingdoms before John, which would have been Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and Greece. Okay. Uh, before. Okay, so he says. Okay, let let let's just let's just entertain that. He says, okay, five is fallen and one is. What is the one that 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 is ruling dur during John's time? Uh, the Romans. The Romans, right? Okay, and the other is not yet come, and when he come, he must continue in a short space. Uh, what is right that? There, the Ottoman uh, Empire. Right there, you said during John's time, so he said the other hasn't came yet. So the Ottoman right. Empire, no, they they hadn't came yet. Okay, okay. So let's continue reading. It, it, it will continue in a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. So Tom, you need an eighth uh, you need a, you need what, an eighth what, what verse are you at? at? I'm, at uh, I'm at 11. 11? Okay. So you're saying the Ottoman Empire, real quick, answer this firm, frank, and forward. The Ottoman Empire is the last empire to rule, correct? Yes. Okay, according to verse 11, it says, And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh. So there's eight heads. And there's a whole entire other empire that's going to come out of whatever the seventh head is that's outside of the seventh head. So the Ottoman right. can't well, see, that's, well, but that's that's where when you was asking me about Daniel seven, when I said the Romans are mixed in there, but it's then you'll have the um that that eight that's coming. That's what I was talking about when I said that the Romans are mixed in. Well, with, well with wait, all of this. hold on, wait, wait, wait. The Romans were an entirely separate head than the Ottomans, according to the breakdown that you just gave us. So you said the yeah. Ottoman was the last one. So out of the Ottomans would come the eighth. The Romans were a different head on there, so that don't work. Yeah, you gave me seven. Let me let me rephrase it. You gave me seven heads. It says seven heads and ten horns. You gave me seven heads: Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and the Ottoman Empire. You said the Ottoman Empire, the se your your seventh head, would be the last empire to rule. Verse eleven says there's going to be another empire that springs out of the seven, which will be a complete eight heads. Okay, Con. All right. Well, I'm. Uh, I had to admit I made a mistake there. Then um, the Ottoman Empire. Um, Ottoman Empire is the one that's coming out of the seven. So, what is the seven? Then, what is this replacement head that we're not that we're missing here? The the um, seventh would be Rome. Okay. So, what is this other head that's missing out of off of the beast? What do you mean? What other head? I mean, if 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 the Ottomans are the eighth and the Romans are the seventh, there is now a missing head. We only get we got Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and the Ottomans. There is one more kingdom here because there's an eighth. So where is this? Mm -hmm. If we understand that the seventh is Rome and the eighth is the Ottomans, there's still a missing head here that needs to be accounted for. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, let me see what Daniel chapter eight.
Okay. Um, uh, and Daniel 8 and 9, it says, And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And the little uh, horn is the Ottoman Empire that's coming out. Okay, again, that's not the question we're asking you. We're asking you the question of who is this missing empire, this missing head? That's yeah. what we're asking you. There's eight, there's eight heads. Right, well, see, and, okay, uh, right now I probably won't be able to have an answer because, and see what it is, is this breakdown needs to be broken all the way down because, like I said, I don't know if you've seen what I've seen them, but that's, that's you know, And I'm kind of, you know, getting um, uh, thrown questions that, you know, that's not not nothing against y'all, but it's just that, you know, I, I have my breakdown in the order, so and that's why I'm having to go everywhere when I when I look at this thing. So, and that's why I'm not able to answer certain questions. If okay. I could do okay. the whole let's breakdown. Move, let's move on. Let's move on from that. Uh, we'll move on from that, but that's going to be something that you're going to want to you're going to want to look into because when you deal with prophecy. Prophecy is uh, far more important than history. Prophecy is far more important than archaeology. Right, right. Prophecy is key when dealing with this holy book. Right. Um, so right. let's go back to Daniel 7, because maybe in breaking down Daniel 7, you could find what you were looking for in Revelation. Uh, so the fourth beast, again, uh, in Daniel 7 would be the Ottoman Empire, correct? I mean, according to your understanding. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to read uh, verse 7, Daniel 7 and 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. What are these ten horns of the Ottoman Empire? uh those are gonna be uh 10 arab kings 10 arab kings if they're 10 arab kings yeah. then certainly these kings would have their own uh uh dominion lands countries can you give me the the, the kingdoms uh right now no okay um do you know what it means when it says, I consider the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the horns first plucked up by the roots? So, uh, yeah, well, that, all of that's explained in this breakdown. Um, I mean, where's the breakdown? That's what we ask you. Where's the breakdown? The people are here. They want to hear your breakdown. So if you could just please give us the breakdown. And okay, I, I also well, want to remind you, want you also... I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you some some game. I'm gonna give you some advice. Just like there's ten. Just like it says seven horns, there's actually eight. Just like it said ten horns in Daniel. Guess what? There's actually eleven. So you can't, you can't just have seven and ten. It's got to be eight and eleven. Twenty-five eight. Because the last one will give birth to the next one. But go ahead. Uh, can you, you said there will be a, another horn that will rise up. And 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 take down the basically this little horn will rise rise up and take down the Ottoman Empire. Further pushing your Ottoman Empire back, and there's this mysterious new kingdom that's gonna rule. No, the they're gonna take down who well okay, let me ask you who conquered the Romans? Nobody. Nobody conquered them. The Ottomans after didn't conquer the Romans them conquer. after they when did that happen? Been... What year no, no. was that? What 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 is the work? Real quick, I, what does the word conquer me? Conquer means to uh, uh, take over, to to huh? rule over. The 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 well, when did the Ottomans rule over the Romans? When did they rule over? Uh yeah. Well, I can't. I can't give an answer to that. 
It never happened. Uh, yeah. for, and for the record, the word conquer, the root word there, con, means complete. So it's going to be a complete takeover. That's what conquer means. That would mean that the Ottomans would have had to go and annex every province of Rome in order for it to be true that they ever conquered them, which, of course, is impossible to show in history because it never occurred. You see what I'm saying? So no, that, that no one ever conquered a Roman. So, okay, well, I'm talking about after the split in Rome, when you had the, the uh, uh, east part of Rome and then the western part. What's the one western? of them was, and again, that's not that's that that wasn't that's still not Rome being conquered, brother. Um, the Ottomans going to war with the Romans and prevailing over them in certain wars, they still didn't conquer them. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I got you. Okay. Um, we can we can we can move on. We can move on. Uh, maybe we could do. Maybe we can go over Babylon again once you get your once you get your complete breakdown. We'll segue into. Let's segue into uh, into Esau. Let's just get into Esau. Um, Matter of fact, you know what? We, we should go here first. Actually. Okay. We should go there first. Let's go to the land of the north. Uh, that's Babylon related, you know. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 3. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read verse 18. It says, in those days, the house of Judah, because now what we're doing, real quick, let me explain this before we enter into the next uh, topic. We... we we're trying to substantiate where Babylon is. If we find where Babylon is, we'll know where the majority of the Israelites are. All right? Because the majority of the Israelites are in Babylon, modern-day Babylon, daughter of Babylon, which is also the land of the north. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read um, Jeremiah 3 and 18. Um, it says, In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I uh, that I have given them for an inheritance unto your fathers. So here we have a prophecy by the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah. And he's saying that the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom will be in the land of the north uh, during these last days and be delivered from there and brought back to the land of Israel, never to be uprooted again. To your best understanding and your knowledge, where is this land of the north? The land of the north will be north of Israel. North um, of Israel. Okay, so that would mean that. Um, well, let's just go out and let's just let's just put this in the airway so the brothers in the class and the brothers watching could understand what you're saying. You're basically saying that we're going to have a continued captivity as a whole nation after the captivity of america correct uh no no you said a continue yeah a continuation yeah right so uh the brother believes that after america the bulk of the israelites will be gathered rounded up and brought to the land of the north him being it's uh it turkey <clears throat> No, 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 no um, as far as martial law, all that, when that go down here, we're going to be tortured and killed here. Or, okay. or here. But okay. over there, they're going to be dealt with also. Okay, so basically what he's saying is that the land of the north is north of Israel, and um, some of our people are already over there, and we're going to be over there. Uh, uh, but here's the thing, brother. Basically, we're going to serve another captivity. We're going to serve another captivity north of Israel. North of Israel, because he said the land of the north in Jeremiah three and eighteen is north of Israel, correct? Right, but no, I like I never said that we would go into another captivity. It's a continuation of what we're already in, because all of our people, no matter where in the world, um, we're being oppressed. It don't matter where we are in the world. Okay, but why is the land of the north being singled out as the significant place of salvation? 
and for the bulk, you yeah, if, it, it's that's if if as you said, we are scattered to the four corners of the earth. So right. there's a remnant of us everywhere. You're talking about there's a remnant of us north of Israel, but this place is being singled out as a significant place of salvation for us. Yeah, let me read it again. Well, but, okay. Hold on, me, Okay, well, let me. Real quick, it says, the house of Judah and the house of Israel. This is the bulk of right. the nation of Israel. Of Israel. Right. Right. Okay, well, see, my question would be, like I had asked you on your post, is when you're dealing with the Americas, you have North and South America. And then when you look at the um, the population of the, the Negroes in South America, is far higher than the um, population of the, the Negroes. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. That's 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 a lie. Not saying you're lying, but that's a that's lie. a lie. You heard that, and I know you heard that because people propagate that. It's just not true. Like people say, there's uh, more Negroes in Brazil than there is in America. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about South America. Period. No, that, that's definitely not true. I mean, why? Why is it? Because can you prove it or i should just believe it because you said it or i mean can you prove that it's higher uh let me see if i can find the website i've seen it on um can, I, I would just need you to prove that there's more there's more than 44 million black people in south america okay Okay, uh, and you said what was the number I would have to be? Forty four million. Forty four million. Uh, okay, Brazil alone, just by itself, uh, has fourteen point five million. Um, uh, Mexico one million, uh, one point three million. Peru one point two. Uh, Cuba one point two. Venezuela one point um, one point zero. Uh, Dominican Republic is. Yeah, and that's not even all the countries. The I, the islands are not like, South America, for the record. Well, I'm well, I'm well. Okay, I did say South America, but I'm actually speaking about the Americas, as you know. I mean, that's the islands whole, are North anything America. that's not North America. The islands are North America still. Like okay, uh, yeah, so Zach, we got a brother. We got a brother in the room that's from the Bahamas. How close is Bahamas to Florida? You can see you can see uh, Miami's lights from Miami's lights from the Bahamas. So to say that the islands aren't North America, but Florida's North America is crazy. The islands would still count as North America. Okay, Con. Uh, I even think with the islands, well, still, it's, I don't get the number. And it's it's not giving me a list of every country uh, in South America, but. Or, or you know, the lowest numbers I'm seeing is uh, well, Bolivia forty thousand. So that's the lowest number I'm seeing. But um, the rest of a lot of them are up in the millions. Okay, but there's not more than twenty countries there. So if you take the twenty countries and we said hypothetically that every one of them was a million, and then we added that on to the fourteen million you said was in Brazil, you still haven't reached the amount of black people that's in the United States of America. Okay, well, let's say, let's say there's 20 million in South America, and how how many here? 44 million. Over double. So what? It, what and that's just so a million. That's not just even counting Canada. Right. Okay. So would so would it be just the 44 million that are in North America? That's that's gonna be, uh, you know, 
or, or what about what's going on with the no, people? As, as, we, as we stated when we asked you the question, when dealing with the land of the north, it's it's speaking about the most significant salvation and where the bulk of Israelites will be saved from. So, of course, because that would be where the majority of Israelites are, that would make the most sense. Okay, let's see. Um, right here in Isaiah 11, uh, verse 11, it says, uh, um, And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Enzyme for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. The outcasts of Israel, we know that's the northern kingdom, correct? No, it says the dispersed of Judah and the outcasts of Israel. It's talking about all 12 tribes. So the northern kingdom weren't outcasted? It said the dispersed when, when of Judah and the outcasts of Israel. So it's talking about all 12 tribes. And a remnant of them that's all over the world. We understand that. Again, the question that we're posing is in wait, dealing with the land of the north. Wait, wait, are you, wait, wait, real quick. Are you saying that the northern kingdom wasn't scattered? No, no, I, that's that's what I'm getting at, is that they are scattered. Where are they scattered at? They're, they're scattered through those places that I just read. And but, when you go to Acts chapter one. Is the Northern Kingdom, is the Northern Kingdom over here in America? Is this, uh, I would say there's probably uh, a few. I don't, I don't, cause I, you know, I don't subscribe to the 12 tribe chart. So I would yeah, have to say record, it's mainly the, the Southern. For the record, you believe that the 12 tribes are all Negroes, correct? Right, right. Okay, so so I'm asking you, have the Northern Kingdom been scattered through the four corners of the earth? Uh, well, I just read what it said, um, but let's go to Acts chapter 1. Uh, matter of fact, I don't have my pocket full with me. Oh, uh, it's in the other room. But when you go to second Ezra, because I, I know y'all subscribe to Ezra's being America, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, let's see. What is it? Verse 40. Um, it says, those are the 10 tribes which were carried away oh, prisoners oh, 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 out of their I, own I, I, land. I, 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 uh, that's not the question. You have to deal with the questions that we're asking. We ask you, is the northern kingdom scattered? Through the four corners of the earth. Well, and that's what I was about to, that's what I'm going into. Yes, they, they are scattered. All, right, all you have to do is say yes. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. We don't disagree with you. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, um, so so <laughs> before you before you hit second Ezra uh thirteen. Um, I want to get back on the land of the north so we can move on from that and get in, get into uh, uh, hey, something else. Um, so you said the land of the north is um, is north of Israel, correct? How north of Israel? Like what place was this? Is this immediately north of Israel or what? I mean, it, it could be. Uh, I I would say Turkey and, and upwards of that. But yeah, it can be immediately north or but I would say Turkey upwards of that. Okay. Cause I remember when we were on the phone, you said Turkey uh and going up into Europe, correct? Right. So if we read the Bible right, if we read the Bible and it says the land of the north is Babylon, what do we deduce from Jer uh, Jeremiah three and eighteen? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> well, I I would have to stick with what I said that they are going to walk like like the scripture says they're coming out of the land of the north, which would be Turkey, Europe, or you know, 
But again, if the Bible says the land of the north is Babylon, then what? Because according to you, Babylon is Mecca. Mecca is south of Israel, deep far south from Turkey. So, I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to make sense of what your understanding of the land of the north and Babylon is. If the Bible said that, would you reconsider well, what the land of the north is? As the scripture. Are we, into, are we going into captivity in Babylon, which is south of Israel? Or the land of the north, which is north of Israel. Which which is there is there is I would have to ask, can you show me a scripture where where it says that the land of the north is Babylon? Yes, we can. And that's what we was waiting on you to ask. Uh Ezekiel chapter 26, uh verse verse 7. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will bring upon Tyrus. Nebuchadnezzar, a king of kings from the north, mm -hmm. with horses and with chariots and with horsemen and with companies and much people. Let's so it's out. identifying Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar being the king of that north, that the north quarter. Go ahead. Let's bring out another precept for understanding. Verse six and seven. Ho ho, come from ho ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. The land of the north. Read. Say if the Lord, uh -huh. I have spread you abroad as, as the four winds of the heaven. Say if the Lord, deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. That dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. It told you, it called it the land of the north in verse 6 and the daughter of Babylon in verse 7. So Babylon is the land of the north. Mecca is south of Israel. Therefore, what you say the land of the north is and what you say Babylon is conflict according to Scripture. So you... Hold on, because you guys are so. So y'all say America is Babylon, right? Ah, right. before we even go there, you say Mecca is Babylon, and you say right. the land of the north is Turkey. Can we sort out your beliefs, what you just told us, and first the scripture? Right. Well, no. Hold, hold on. Hey, let, right. let me call you right back. Um, okay, what was the question again, my bad? Okay, uh, as we read, it identified Babylon as the land of the north here in Zechariah 2.67. So because it did that, and you say Babylon is Mecca, and the land of the north is Turkey, according to scriptures, Babylon and the land of the north are one and the same. But your understanding where Babylon is is Mecca, which is south of Israel, right? So we're just trying to get an understanding of how come you have these two different locations for what the Bible says is the same place. Well, but we'll see, and we dealing with because, like y'all asked me earlier, where was Babylon during their time, and we know that to be Iraq, and that's why I was going to ask you, y'all, y'all subscribe to America being Babylon, and that's you know, and that's why I'm saying if 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 you can Mecca being Babylon, and then America's Babylon, like how. If if my place switched to Mecca, then they have wrong with that. How come there's nothing wrong with you guys as Babylon switching over to America? There's absolutely nothing wrong with it because we understand that the land of the north and Babylon is one and the same. Therefore, we understand that when it says the land of the north, it's talking about Babylon. You're telling us that they're two different things. No, I don't believe I am. Um and that, well, and that's why I'm trying to get some understanding because if uh, uh, America cannot mean the land of the north, you said what? Say that one more time. And then it says, I said North America cannot mean the land of the north. And no, then because I, I, of Jeremiah, I, I, that's not the, here's the thing, though. Oh, hold on, and, and Jeremiah, you, you won't, you can't prove how Mecca and Turkey are two different places, but the Bible says it's supposed to be one place. Let's focus on the, the top of your hand first. We have no problem going through and proving anything that we believe. But we're asking you a question right now. How, how, why is your understanding of this, what the Bible says is the same place, two different places? You have to make sense of that. Is this the same? I'm, that's what I'm saying is I'm going to tell you the, the same reason that you guys do. No, you can't say it's the same reason as that. We believe that America is Babylon. Therefore, every 
alias of Babylon that appears in the scriptures is applicable to the location that we believe is Babylon, right? So uh, land of the north, Shinar, these are some of the things, the land of the Chaldees, these are some of the things that you can apply to Babylon. You believe Babylon is Mecca, but you believe the land of the north is someplace that is in no way connected to Mecca geographically. So you need to make sense of how that's possible. Okay, let me, all right, all right, I'll see what you're saying. I'm going to explain why I say Mecca is a uh, place in 17 and 18. No, no, the, the question isn't why is, is Mecca Babylon? The question is how is the land of the north Turkey and Mecca Babylon when the land of the north and Babylon are one and the same? That's the question. Right, so what you would have to do, well, what you would, basically what you would have to do is say you were wrong about the land of the north and that the yeah, land you, of the you north, have to be wrong about one of the two. Yeah, the land of the north is Babylon, and 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 that spirit it's a spiritual location for Mecca. That's what you would have to say because the Bible says the land of the north and Babylon are the same thing, which you're saying is not. Right. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Right. And if, you know, if I if I'm wrong, I have, you know I ain't got no problem admitting that. I I ain't got no problem putting my foot in my mouth. You know, uh, but well, what I what I was it's, it's not complicated. It's it's simple because we have it. We have the Bible saying that the land of the north is Babylon. So it's some if you wanted to use that for your argument that Babylon is Mecca, you would just have to say that Babylon and the land of the north is the same place, which is Mecca, to your to your understanding. You know what I mean? Right. right. It would work better. It would work better for you, is what I'm saying. Um so let me let me let me let me move on. Uh so basically Jeremiah 3 and 18 says. The house of Judah and the house of Israel, they shall come together out of the land of the north or Babylon to the land that I have given them. So, uh, with, in your understanding, you're saying that the Israelites are going to be in a continued captivity under the Ottoman Empire, correct? Under, uh, no, 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 that's not what I'm... I was, no, I was saying Rome and the, it's, they're all going to... They're working together. Like, I don't know if y'all remember when Nazi was saying that America is the puppet. The Saudi Arabians are running, you know, so that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. OK, OK. No matter how it happens, it's going to happen to your understanding that we're going to end up our people. The bulk of them are going to end up under Ottoman Empire captivity in the future. No matter who's helping America, Rome, ISIL, whoever. Yeah, if yeah, Will Rock, yeah, if you want to word it like that, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So where is Satan C that? Let's get into Satan C. I know this is um, one of your favorite scriptures. Uh Revelations chapter two. Uh, what verse is that? Um uh, Hold on, my bad, my bad, it might be. You're all right. All right, uh, my bad. Uh, Revelations 2, verse uh, 13. It says, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holy, holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days, wherein Antipas was uh, my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. So uh, right here, this talk is, that's Pergamos. If Satan's seat, you're saying Satan's seat is Turkey, right? How does this prove, how does this prove Babylon is Mecca? This uh satan see okay let me um well for one is he's writing the pergamos is for my research pergamos is istanbul turkey yes sir all right so <clears throat> um 
and there's a deeper under, and that's why I said I would have to go through the whole spiel for for any of this to make sense. Um, reason I say okay, let's go to uh, Mecca. When it said Revelation 17 and 18, it says that Mecca is the mother of harlots, and that's what Mecca sure. is. They say that is Babylon is the mother of harlots. Well, yeah, my bad, my You're bad. Right. Correction. You're right. Yeah, so uh, Babylon is the mother of harlots. And this is why I say Mecca is uh, that mother because that's exactly what Mecca means, is mother. Uh, um, before Muhammad came along, we know that they was worshiping a god for every day of the year. That's what they want to get back to. Because you have, you have different sects of Muslims. The woman, the woman is the harlot. Uh, so you have the you have the beast that you said is the Ottoman Empire. Who is this woman sitting on the beast? The woman that's sitting on the beast. Um, that uh, the woman who uh, uh, Nimrod and Semiramis, his mother slash wife. That's the great whore. All religions come out of. So how how is that woman controlling the beast? I'm gone. Through through their uh, religious and and political um, policies. Because Babylon, we know, is going to be a religious and a political city. Am I okay, correct? So, so so that's how did that's how Semiramis controls the beast. No, what I'm no what I'm saying. I'm not talking about literally the woman Simran. I'm talking about the uh, the the deities and and all of these gods and all of these religions that sprang out of her. But that, I mean, that's the thing, though. It says that there's a woman that's running and controlling this beast. Right. Well, that's that's why I was saying I would have to give the whole breakdown because when you go into that crescent moon and star. That's uh, we know that that's dealing with Nimrod and, and Semiramis. Okay, so a woman, a woman is not a place. It's dealing with an ideology, correct? Huh. Okay. Uh, let me let me let me let me get this scripture real quick. You know what I'm looking for? Even, even right there. Let, let, let's get this. Even right there, that one. Okay, so we let can me go to that one after that. Okay. Uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their uh, tongues and, and teeth. So here we have John the Revelator saying the fifth angel poured out his vial on the seat of the beast. I don't know how he could pour out fire on an ideology, but it also says that the seat of the beast, which is where the woman is, is a kingdom. You, you cut out right there, Rock, that last part. It's saying that the woman, the woman is a kingdom. And and, and the seat that she's sitting up, sitting in is gonna be uh uh burned with fire. Where are you at? Revelation chapter 16, verse 10. Sixteen and ten, and uh, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. That's what you just read. Come, and, come. You're saying that's a woman? Yeah, well, let's let's prove it. Jump to the next chapter and read Revelation 17 and 6. With the with okay. the with, with the with keeping in mind that the woman is the subject matter. Ideology. Yeah, the, yeah, the ideology. 
Right. Okay. Revelation 17 and 6, it says, uh, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of uh, the martyrs of Yahweh. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Yeah, so how is an ideology drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Mashiach? And, you know, and he saw her. And, and he saw her, yeah. How, how is that? Like, I, I need to break down on that. I would ask you this. All right, Christianity, right? Does Christianity have blood on his hands? Oh, uh, you could say that, definitely. Right, so, and that, that's what I'm getting at. In the, in the name of these religions or in the name of these gods, they will kill the saints. Okay, okay. Well, I, 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 can, I can accept that answer. I can accept that answer. Um, so you're saying basically that Islam is going to control the ten kings of the Ottoman Empire? Islam, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and then... There's going to be one king that comes up, takes down, and takes down three kings, right? Hmm. One king that comes. There's going up to be a little, uh, and and takes down three of those kings, right? Uh, I'm trying. To yeah. Well, he said he said he hasn't he hasn't gotten to that part of the breakdown. Oh. Uh, um. Do you do you, do we have any idea where these kings' dominion is? Do we we ask on that? One of those kings. The geographical location. Yeah. Not. Nah. Oh, no, I, I don't know. I, okay, I'm not even okay. going to lie and say I do. Okay, okay. So let's go. Let's go ahead and segue. Um, uh, unless you want to deal with some of this, but I mean, yeah, he. We, okay, <laughs> yeah, we did. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> let's deal with Esau. Let's deal with Esau, and then we'll deal with the twelve tribe Negro only ideology after this. Esau, right? Okay. You guys kind of we kind of talked about it. Um. What does it mean when it says he was born red and hairy? No, red all over like a hairy oh, garment. Sorry. He's not born here. Red all over like a hairy garment. Uh, that he was born. Um, some some will say that he was born. That means his, you know, you can see the blood through his skin, and some believe that his hair was red. I'm I'm leaning more towards his hair being but, uh, a well, reddish let's color. Talk about where in uh Genesis 25. Is it is his hair ever referenced? In Genesis twenty five, is his hair ever referenced? Well, and see, well, okay, I know what you're getting at. Um, it says, uh, "And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau." And right there, what I, my answer would have to be is the hairy garment. Okay, but again, it says like. If I say you're red all over, like, does that is a tomato involved? No, I'm giving a similitical something that you know to, so you can understand. So it, it don't say nothing about him having hair at all. I got you, and that, and that's why I said I'm leaning more towards that. You know, so um, I got you. Um, so now, now can I answer our question? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Now, I teach this. I know the four major camps uh, teach it uh, about him eating raw meat. No, we don't teach. We don't teach nothing about him eating raw meat. Okay. Okay. Kind. Kind. Like, even, even though, though they, they like, like raw, raw meat, meat, we don't teach about the meat raw meat. We don't teach that he 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 was eating raw meat in Genesis. I was gonna say because lentils, lentils is right there. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, uh, so let let's talk about the blessing. Let's talk about the blessing. What is uh, what was Esau's blessing that Jacob gave to him? Uh, Esau's blessing. Um, it says uh, verse Genesis twenty seven, starting at verse thirty nine. It says, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him. Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and the dew of heaven from above, and by thy work and by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. We know right when it's uh dealing with the fatness, that's that's dealing with the, the um oil. 
Um, uh, how you gonna say that? Duel, how you gonna say that when you watch the Nazi <laughs> debate? Are you sure you want to deal with? Are you is sure that, you want to play? Is that? that your final answer, brother? <laughs> I know I did hear y'all and y'all and I because I already know what y'all gonna go into with that. So let's just leave that alone. (laughs) 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 All right. uh, Um, Okay. You know what? Here's the good one. We never we didn't really go through this. Uh, Has Esau? Who who are the Edomites today? Who are the Edomites today? The Saudi Arabians. Who are they and where are they? Saudi Arabia. The Saudi Arabia. The Arabia. The Saudis. The Saudis? There is. Uh, yeah, main, mainly they're in Saudi Arabia. Um, but some of the research I've been seeing, uh, there, there's one African tribe that they call themselves Edo. Not not Ebo, but Edo. Or also known as I Do. Mm-hmm. And they they claim to be these descendants from Esau too, mm-hmm. um, but mainly I would have to say in Saudi Arabia. Okay, uh, has Esau ever been scattered out of his own land? Uh, well, I know the Nabataeans uh, moved on um, west, and see, and, and and see what I was with the Nabataeans. I know they say that. Edomites being white people, they built all the architecture there, right? The and from my research is showing that the Nabataeans was the ones who actually built all of that. I mean, Jesus. some people say that, that there's a there's not a historical consensus on who built those structures in Petra. Right. And that, and that's what I'm seeing is that it, there's nothing consistent, you know. Um but um but yeah, they, they did get moved. So the, who would the Nabataeans be? Aren't the Nabataeans Arabs? Yeah, that was an Arab nation. Didn't they come up from Saudi Arabia? So how are the Edomites the Saudis if the Nabataeans are the Saudis that came and pushed the Edomites out of their land? Well, because you would have the same way. Um, <clears throat> or, or, okay, let me. Did the Northern Kingdom, we know that the Northern Kingdom went to war with the Southern Kingdom, correct? Yeah, different times. And they and they even try to take each other captive. So and so we can look at that in the same regard with the Nabataeans. And I well, but first let me say this. I'm not saying that the Nabataeans are Edomites. I am saying that they are an Arab nation though. So the actual people of Arabia are clearly the Nabataeans, the original people of Saudi Arabia. They rose up, created a kingdom and drove the people of Edom out of their land. Mm-hmm. Telling me somehow the Edomites came back, got their land and Saudi Arabia back from the Nabataeans? Well, um, I would have to say that whenever, because I, I would have to compare it with Israel, you know, because we know in Israel, whenever we was exiled out of our land, our um, uh, captivity was over, we always came back. So my, that's what I would have to say with that, is that they would have came back. But also, there's some people that subscribe to the Palestinians being Edomites, and I haven't done any kind of um, you know research on that, but um, some subscribe to them being Edomites also. Jewish people subscribe to them being Edomites for sure. Yeah. OK. Uh, uh, pulling with the sword, man. Ruling with the sword, well, yeah, exactly what you see over there in Saudi Arabia is they they that's what they do is they rule over their people with the sword. You sure they don't use what what they call them IEDs? Last yeah. time I checked, they was using IEDs to rule over people, scare people, and whatnot. Uh, it uh IED the uh, uh the army that what is it uh improvised explosive device? There you go. Yeah. Uh, no. Well, I would say that the people and you know the the Pakistanis and all of them. Uh, but as far as the Saudi Arabians, when you look at um, like I mean, I'm pretty sure you can put it up on YouTube right now. You know, them beheading people in the street, broad daylight. You know, are, are they now? Now the thing is, is that something that's unique to the Saudi Arabians? 
What them them beheading people? Yeah. No, not necessarily. No. So that I mean, that's my thing. That when it when it speaks about the blessing of Esau being that he was going to rule with the sword. I mean, are the Saudi Arabians when they rise into power over the earth, as you say, they will with a sword, with a literal, or are they going to do it by some other mechanism? Well, no, nah, yeah, of course, if, if, you know, if you're going to war, you need more than just a sword, you know, but as far as with, when, when they do get their domin the dominion that they want, they will, that's how they will rule is with a sword. But until then, when they have to fight and go to war. So if, if they're ruling over me then, and I can get a stockpile of AK-47s, I got to beat, right? You say that again? If they're ruling oh, over us. Gotta, and I could. You got to win if you can. <laughs> if I got a stockpile of AK 47, I can I win, right? Because they only got swords. They don't got any projectiles. Well, no, 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 no. They do. They they do have a. Uh, they so have how, a they're gonna rule, how they're going to rule is not with the literal sword, but it was going to be with projectile munitions, correct? Right. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. That, that is how they will fight the war to win. But I'm saying when they're actually established and ruling, they're going to rule with the sword. Just like how they do over there now, but if they if they rule with the sword, then anybody who has a gun could beat them and easily overthrow their rule. Then, right? No, they would have guns. Like they're saying, um, oh, the um, sword is not going to be how they rule. It's going to be with the gun. Well, no, I, no, I believe it will be with the sword. It, like I said, like but, I was about to say, if they got guns. And that's what they'll go to if there's an actual problem so they can quell any uprising in order main, to maintain their power and rule. Then they're not ruling with the literal sword. They're ruling with firearm. No. The modern day sword. <clears throat> no, they would, they would be ruling with the sword. They, that's how they deal. How, they okay. be if, if, I say, if I say I rule, if I say I rule with my hands, but if I can't beat you up, I shoot you, then what does that mean? I'm ruling with a gun. I'm not ruling with my hands. I mean, well, I, technically, in that regard, you would be ruling with your hands because your hand is holding the gun. <laughs> well, well, I mean, okay. Uh, in, in that in that instance, then they they will be ruling with their hands because you need your hands to shoot a gun the same way you needed to swing a sword. Right. It was, but, so really, it all goes up to. Even to your 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 wings. They're ruling with their shoulder wings, their shoulder blades. I mean, we're gonna talk about the hip bones connected to the um, <laughs> uh, Well, okay, so let let's let's continue in this blessing. Um so we can we for time's sake. When did uh, what does it mean says doubt uh it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. When, uh, uh, that's that's referring to the prophecy of uh, when, when David um, was at Edom and ruled over Edom. And then um, I believe it was during the time of Solomon, they uh, revolted. Am I correct with that? With Solomon? Was it with Solomon? I want to say it was later. I don't it, it because it was another can. I want to say Hezekiah pushed a gang of them off a cliff. That, okay, yeah, that makes okay. So yeah, that's basically what that's going into. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. So who are the who are the worst who are the worst nation on the planet Earth? According to the Bible. Who? Okay, I, th I thought who you were going to ask my opinion. <laughs> who were the worst of the Gentiles? I didn't hear that. The, no, no. The worst people on the face of the earth, according to the Bible, would be the Edomites. Okay, that's my main man. Okay. So the worst of the Gentiles or the worst of the heathen would be the Edomites, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the wicked of the earth. Who would the wicked of the earth be? Well, see right here, I because I, I know um, y'all use the border of wickedness scripture to say me. I would have to say anybody else and don't keep them. But we know that Esau is the border of wickedness too. 
So when you de- I'm dealing with nations, brother, because you know the Most High ain't dealing with individuals. He's dealing with nations. God. That's how God. he judges. God. So when you, when you say who's the wicked of the earth nation-wise, who we have to say? The same person we agreed that was the worst of the heathens, correct? God. God. Okay. Now, who kicked us out of our land and, and for us to never return and dwelt there? Who uh, uh the Romans in seventy A.D. The Romans in seventy A.D. Yeah. Are the Romans white people? Uh yeah. Okay, so if if the Bible says the worst of the Gentiles and the wicked of the earth would kick us out of our lands for us never to return and dwell there themselves, would it be safe to say that? It's saying that the Edomites would do this to us. Uh, no, I can't say that. But I, you just I, said I the worst of the heathen and the wicked of the earth. You agreed on that, right? So right. then, of course, then, then that would have to mean that, right? Well, and see, okay, let me answer that with a scripture as far as uh, because this would explain. If, if a person don't know the most high nor his law, would that person be reverted to as an animal or a beast? Hmm? Uh, he could. Okay, so because Ecclesiastes 3 and 19 says that the you know they, they saw themselves that the state of men was uh beasts. Um so what I want to go okay, to is Isaiah. But there's there's a nation. There's a nation that's seen as an archetype for the wickedness and the worst, which you agreed is the Edomites. Right. So that's yeah, the point that we're going to. So, so right. go ahead. Yeah, let me read this. Turn turn with me, like your pastor say. Turn with me to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. <laughs> that's right. Ezekiel. <laughs> Ezekiel, seven. Ezekiel 7. All right. Okay, we're going to start at verse 21. All right. It says, And I will give it, talking about our land, into the hand of strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. That's the Edomites, ain't it? The wicked of the earth. Right. right. I, I can agree with that. You can agree with that? Yeah. I love you, my brother. Now, <laughs> let's go to verse 24. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen to their houses. Whose houses? Our houses. Go ahead. I will also make them pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. This happened. When did the Edomites do this to us? When, well, hold on. When you, when you say Edomites, what do you mean? Are you talking about white people? Edomites. Because they're the worst of the heathen and, and they're the wicked of the earth. So when according to you, that's the Edomites. So tell us when the Edomites did this. When the you talking about as far as my understanding of who Edom is. I'm talking about the Edomites. Whoever, Whoever the are. Edomites are, they would have to have done this. And that and, and that's how you're gonna know who the Edomites are, who kicked us out of our land and possessed it and lived there and defiled it. Well, they, we know that the Edomites um, uh, have done that, but then also we know we that know, in know Genesis. That. Who are the Edomites? Huh? Who are the, who Edomites? Are the Edomites? Yes. Uh, you know who, who I said that was earlier. <laughs> so the Arabs. The you said we know that the Arabs have done that. When did the Arabs do that? Well, that's what I'm getting at. And I, I was uh, Genesis chapter 10. Is that uh, or wait, 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 metaphor, my Edom- bad. Edomites don't exist in Genesis chapter 10. I- exactly, that's my point. Is it's it's the uh, right here, all right, what you just read in Ezekiel, it says, uh, wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Now, we know. Uh, the worst of the heathen, of course, that's that's gonna be Edom, right? 
But yep. what I'm getting at is is because you know I subscribe to the white people being Japheth. So when you look at Genesis 10 and it says that or nine when uh, Japheth shall dwell in the tents of Shem, you know. So what I'm saying is earlier that some people subscribe to the Palestinians being Edomites. Like I said, what I can't say that. Huh? What are we only concerned with what you subscribe to? Right, right. Yeah. Well, and that's what that's what I'm saying, and that's what I'm saying is some subscribe to them pa uh, Palestinians being Edomites, and if I if I was the type of person where I where I just want to make this doctrine work, then I would just say that the Palestinians are Edomites, but I'm not gonna do that. But but you still but the whole thing is even if you was that type of person or even if you believed that, you still couldn't prove that, and and here's why. Read the read the first verse again. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 21. Uh -huh. And I will give it in the hands of the strangers for a prey, Read. and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, uh -huh. and they shall pollute it. And they shall pollute it. Right, go ahead. Uh, skip the right. skip to verse 24. Uh -huh. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I will bring the right wicked of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pump of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Meaning the pump of the strong, meaning they were going to take it from us. Those Palestinians didn't take it from us. There is no argument yeah. as to who took that from us. Those are white people. So no matter which way you have to cut it, you have to deduce that the worst of the heathen and the wicked of the earth that's being referenced in Ezekiel 7 are so-called white people. You've already said that according to the Bible, the wicked of the earth and the worst of the heathen are the Edomites. So in factoring in what all that says, the only logical and scripturally fluid deduction that can be made is that the Edomites are the so-called white men. Well, no, and that and that's why I was saying earlier when y'all was saying the wicked thing because I I know y'all will use the border of wickedness. And granted, I mean, and like I, I, I said, y'all did put a word say I will bring the worst of the heathen. So the worst is which is going to be Edom. Whether he's the Arab or white man, it's going to be Edom. That's um, right. So, so and so and. We uh, what? We know did this. We know that the so-called white man did this to us, starting with the Greeks, start then Going with the Romans, Romans, all the way up to 1948. I mean, they didn't take it there, but they're the descendants of those who did take it, and they're staying there. So, mm -hmm. right, you would so have to go ahead. My question, my question then would be: during the uh, sub-Saharan um, slave trade, when we was dealing with the Arabs, and uh, we was we was kept. Uh, held captive by them were they not in our land then um the question is number one during the sub-saharan slave trade were israelites being taken into slavery you said what were israelites being taken into slavery in the sub-saharan slave trade were they being taken uh yeah how, how can you prove that <coughs> We, we were long expelled out of our land and on our way into North and West Africa by then. So how is it during the sub-Saharan slave trade that Israelites were being taken into slavery? All right, I'll read Isaiah 11 and 11 again. Because he's given us um, locations. Now, again, th those are there are remnants of Israelites all over the place. You need to prove how the sub-Saharan slave trade were Israelites being traded. That uh, is Isaiah 11 is not going to prove that. No, I'm saying because you you said that we was headed towards you know West Africa, so I was so I was going to pull that to show that we was still there, or and we still have a remnant of our people there. Okay, but the sub-Saharan slave trade was millions of people, not a remnant, mm -hmm. millions. So the, right. the no, question no, is, well, no. who were well, the people on, in sub-Saharan Africa? Well, no, no. I, like, all I said was Israelites went into slavery. I never said that that's all that they took. Because if when you read in Jeremiah 25, the Babylonians didn't only take Israel into captivity. They okay. took the Edomites. Okay, that's great, right? So the question is, what does that have to do with who came and took our land and possessed our land? That's the scripture we're referencing. You're talking about the sub-Saharan slave trade. We're talking about who came and took our land from Who us directly and, our... and possesses it, was... it? Right, it was the Romans. 
Boom. So that would have to be who the worst of the heathen and the wicked are, right? Uh, I, according to you, yeah. No, not according. No, according to you. You sure. said the Edomites are the worst of the heathen and the wicked of the earth. You said it. Then we showed you that the Bible said that the worst of the heathen and the wicked of the earth were going to be those that came and conquered us in our land and kicked us out and possess our land. You agree that that's the Romans. So according to the Bible, the Romans or white people have to be Edomites. Go ahead. Well, Naquam, this is a trick bag and you're in it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we got you in a trick bag, brother. Uh, shut up. <laughs> Uh, but no, no. Okay. Okay. Well, and seeing this, is what I was getting at, that's why I brought out that uh, Joshua scripture earlier when the you know the Romans and the Edomites mix. So either way, dealing with um, uh, the Romans or the Edomites coming in because they they mix with each other. That's what Esau does is he mixes. He tries to hide himself. Okay. Um, and so like like. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you finish your last point. Oh no no I no I was gonna say that I I would even be willing to subscribe to the fact that uh you know the Rothschilds the um uh all, all of these so called white people that are at the at the so called elite I would I would subscribe that they uh either eat them or mix with eat them. But as far as your everyday, you know, just uh, regular white people, I don't, I don't think a lot of them are eating my okay. Now, like I so, said, so, the ones, uh, so the ones that enslaved you and it hung you and they shoot you and they hate your guts. Don't, don't, none of those are eating Well, when we talk about slavery, <clears throat> we gotta understand that uh, the the people who owned slaves was rich white people. No, um, that's not that's not true. Who told you that? White people didn't own plantations. No, oh, there there were Irish immigrants, poor Irish immigrants that almost slaves. So we no, yeah, I can, I can believe, but I'm I'm talking I'm I'm talking about it as far as a plantation where you have hundreds of slaves out here working your no, crop. No, no, no. I'm I'm talking about slavery. If you put one black person into slavery, that's that's slavery, and that's a crime right. against the chosen people of God, right or wrong. Right. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just got some important news from the sergeant, the sergeant of arms. Uh, Go ahead. How how valid is the book of Jasher? How valid is it? Yeah. Well, that's uh, well, that's why I uh, I, I haven't. Uh, I've always heard that is no good. I haven't researched in uh, any of that on Jasher. You know. Okay, I'm, I'm but you're using it to teach a breakdown. Well, I mean, no, I mean the same way you know that y'all pull this, y'all, y'all don't believe everything in here. Hold on, but King, King, when did when have you ever seen us pull out Babylon and Timbuktu? Well, I'm, well, I'm just saying I'm going off of what Deacon told me. I, 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 well, you've never seen us pull from Babylon and Timbuktu. No, I no, I honestly cannot say that I I have seen y'all use that book. That's what I'm saying. So the book, the and even in in the B book of Babylon, the Timbuktu is a book that's comprised of historical fact, right? So no matter what anybody says, there are historical facts that are within Babylon, the Timbuktu. The book of Jasher is a book purporting itself to be a holy and inspired scripture. That's different from a historical reference. So it, it has to fit different criteria than a historical reference. It has to be infallible, right? So go mm -hmm. ahead. Let me read this from the book of Jasher. You could you could stop using it quite frankly. Uh, this is Jasher chapter 27, verse 4. It says, And on a certain day, Esau went in the field to hunt, and he found Nimrod walking <laughs> in the wilderness. <laughs> Nimrod <laughs> just grooving to the forest <laughs> with his two men. Bro, that's Nimrod, Nim, at the time Esau was alive, Nimrod was fucking long dead. Kim, Kim Trail. <laughs> By that time. <laughs> right, right. And I yeah, and that's that's one story. When I first came into the truth, that was uh one of the stories I had heard that didn't make any sense. That you know, it Nimrod was but way back in the uh, but you decided to use the book anyway. But you said you were there at 
<laughs> I thought you you must have dropped the forty at ten forty five. Well, no, no, I well, no, I never said I never said that I subscribed to the forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it had it was it was midnight. <laughs> The new bottle, new bottle came, came out. Came new out. flavor. It was yeah. the blueberry malt liquor. Okay, in all seriousness, the Book of Jasher is trash. Um, and it was called the Book of Pseudo Jasher. Anybody can look it up. You can find that information. Right. Um, okay. So, oh, I wanted, I wanted to go here. I wanted you to break this down for me real quick. And then I promise you we got one. Just I probably got like three more questions. Amos chapter one. Verse six. I want to know when this happened. You ready? Yeah. Thus saith the Lord, for three three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. So when did uh uh uh, uh Gaza the Hamites, the, the original Gaza Hamites, the when Egyptians. did they, the Egyptians, when did they deliver up the whole captivity of Israelites to Edom, to the Arabs? Uh, well, that's, I'm going to uh, plead the fifth on that one. Um, okay, but well, I, you know, I, you're I, a great brother. Ask you, you're can brother. you break that down so I can get some understanding? I'll tell you exactly when it happened. Uh, it's called the transatlantic slave trade. When the Africans sold us to the white man, them is the white but, man. But Gaza, you say Gaza is ham, right? Um, yeah, the Philistines. Right. Gaza is in the Gaza was in the west coast of Africa when we was in, doing the transatlantic slave trade. Are you familiar with the conquest of the Levant and the gentrification of the Levant? No. Uh, Zachariah, let, and Zachariah and I speaks about it, but as we know, when we when we were pushed out of our land, the Hamites were pushed out with us. If you do any research on the Kingdom of Carthage, you know about the Kingdom of Carthage, right? Hannibal. I've heard, yeah, yep. Right. So when you do the history, it'll tell you that it was us and it was the Hamites that was with us, the Zidonians and the Philistines that was with us, because all the Negroid people that were in that region was getting pushed out by the so-called white man and the so-called Arab man. Right. The Nabataeans rose and then the, the, from the south and the Romans rose from the north. Right. So mm -hmm. as that happened, we all were migrating into Africa further and deeper into the interiors of Africa together. Mm -hmm. We were separating. We still identified each other separately, but we were all getting pushed out together, especially as the Arabs rose and began to seize most of East and North Africa, right? Right. So we all got pushed out there. So the Hamites, of course, uh, conspired with the so-called white man to sell us into slavery. And I'll, I'll, we'll prove it to you in the Bible real quick. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. Zachariah. No, there you go. Okay, turn with me real quick to Zechariah 9. And, uh, well, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can. We're going to prove to you that because of the conquest of the Levant, starting with Alexander and the Romans, that um, no, no, uh, nobody's supposed to be over there right now that's over there. They're all bastards, not just the, uh, the white Jews in Israel. But also those fake ass, excuse my language, Palestinians. Those are not the real Palestinians. Those were real Africans that were over there. But the Bible tells you this. Zechariah 9 and 6, it says, And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. So when you look up the word Ashdod in the in the Greek, I'm sorry, in the Hebrew, it's a major uh Philistine city on the Mediterranean Sea west from Jerusalem. All right. So they're right now I'm supposed to be over there. Right. And just going into uh substantiating what the brother was saying about the history of the conquest of Levant. I think Babylon yeah. and Temple to speak about some of that. Um uh, okay, so just the let's 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 do this real last quick topic. Uh 12 tribe Negro only. Um, where mm -hmm. is the northern kingdom? 
the northern kingdom uh spread throughout um uh turkey down into the interiors of africa okay um who are the turkish members of the northern kingdom that are in turkey you said what who are these turkish israelites in turkey can i research these people um off what the scriptures say i haven't tried to look up any negroes in turkey or anything i'm going off with the um <laughs> scriptures say. Um, so but they're, they're from turkey they've been in turkey this whole time right i'm yeah or no no uh i'm just well from turkey from from europe all the way into the interiors of africa so but they would have had and to he, be and even, and even, in turkey for generations right i'm talking about we're talking about 20 you know uh five twenty seven hundred years right huh okay what okay. we don't know uh, what, how we multiply bro why why the way we, we would have been us? took over turkey that's what um, they kicked us out of egypt for. just just and i, and I want to say this too um the elders just took a trip to israel everybody seen the footage of that made the news elders the house of david uh, Elder Mathathwa, Elder Barak, uh, Elder Banyamian, Priest Kahan, etc., uh, Priest Karata Zaala. Before they went to uh, Israel, they stopped in Turkey, where he's saying that there's this great portion, which there is a great portion of Israelites in Turkey. Who knows what country these Israelites that are in Turkey are from? Are they from Turkey or are they from somewhere else? They're from Jamaica. There's a great deal of jamaicans that live in turkey and that is pretty much the crux of the black population in turkey a lot of jamaican immigrants there to my knowledge and he says he hasn't done the research so he cannot produce any fact contrary to that there is no ancient black population of turkish people that have been in existence in turkey for the last 2500 years all right so i just want to make that plain and clear but go ahead uh okay so i want to ask you a question the northern kingdom is black other black people right other negroes correct mm -hmm. do you hate black people <laughs> <laughs> i just gotta ask you straight up no you said what now <laughs> do you hate black people well okay what was the question before that i said i said you said that the northern kingdom are negroes other black people I'm asking you if you hate black people. No. You don't hate black people. Have you ever hated black no. people? But like before you in the truth, maybe. No. No. Okay. Do you have a problem with Hispanic brothers? People. No. We'll just, we can just Hispanic say people. people. Hispanic people. Huh? No. 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 You said that with a smile on your face, brother. You don't have a problem with Hispanic I know how it go down in the Midwest, man. Them Mexicans crazy down there. That, I ain't got no problem with none of them. I, I never you dealt never, with them never, like that. Have you ever, have you ever said the word, a four-letter word called spick? That's a good question. Have I ever said it or have I ever called? Uh... Have you ever said spick joking around with your other black friends? <laughs> no. No, okay. So I'm, at, I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand because there's a key prophecy that lets us know that the Hispanics and Latinos and Native Americans are our brothers. By the way, towards them. By the way, we have a problem with them, and vice versa. So let me read this, and you tell me how this applies to other Negroes in Turkey. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, not vex Ephraim. How are we vexing? Right. Yeah, how are we vexing them niggas in Turkey and, and all that? I don't even know them. I don't live with them, none of that. <laughs> I just found out they were there. The elders came from Turkey. It's Jamaicans in Turkey. Oh, that's crazy. It's in Turkey. thought I was in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what I would have to resort to is that's going, uh, you know, the, in the curses in Deuteronomy 28 where um, our brother, we would have an evil eye toward our brother. 
media brother or just a brother from another tribe. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, which I could get down with that, but but the question is. All these Israelites that you say is in the other side of the world, where is our evil eye for them? Where is our evil eye? I mean, well, uh, well, we can't have it. We don't. We're, we're not there with them. We can go to every prison in America and show who we believe the Northern Kingdom and who we believe the Southern Kingdom at war. We can go to every mm -hmm. ghetto, neighborhood, yeah. neighborhood, and we can see the problem between these two kingdoms. Yeah, I, but we I can't see any I'm example of who you say. You said what? But we can't see any example of what you said. This 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 is kind of the thing. Like like I was trying to tell Nasi when we were debating him, we got to deal with the practicality of these breakdowns, and you got to be able to bring these breakdowns to life. Like when why we're compelled to believe what we believe. I I can have that brother read that scripture, and I can break that scripture down, and I can make it make sense to any logical human being. I need you to be able to do the same thing with all the things that you purport to believe, i.e. Mecca, Esau not being the white man, and the Northern Kingdom not being the, the Hispanics. Come, and uh, every time we are faced with these things, the, the, our opponents always fail to do that. This is what we want you guys to do when we bring you guys on. But, brothers, I don't, for whatever reason, it's not being done. Okay, well, do, do you subscribe to the 12 tribes initially – being Negro, when Jacob most had his children, most definitely. Okay. Where was I gonna go? All right, so now I'm gonna go to the um. When in Genesis chapter forty nine, where we would be. You said what? In Genesis forty nine, uh, that's telling us where we where we would be, right? Uh, in certain instances, yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to read uh, verse 3, starting at verse 3. It says, uh, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defilest thou it, he went up to my couch. I would have to ask is based on what I just read and using nothing else except for precepts in the Bible, how can we prove that the Reubenites are Seminole Indians? Um, by comparing what group of people fits the excellency of his dignity and his might, and then going into the other aspects of Reuben, Deuteronomy 33 and the other history about the tribe of Reuben. Well, okay. Well, that's what I'm. I need. You know, like, uh, how do we know the Seminole Indians when it says the excellency of his dignity? Uh, I'm trying to get some. On. Well, number one, one of the first and primary ways you get to understand the tribe of Reuben being the Seminole Indians is understanding that the blessing given to them and their role in the nation would be a warrior tribe. There's three warrior tribes in the nation: Reuben, right. Gad, and Manasseh. Right. Mm -hmm. But one, we, we analyze the warrior aspect of the Seminole Indian, right? The warrior aspect, the fact that they fought the so-called white man to a ceasefire and are technically legally still at war with the United States of America to this day. That attests to their prowess and their blessing as being warriors. <laughs> you said what? That they was at war with until this day. And I said, well, hell, ain't we all? Well, legally they're at war. Like, they, they haven't signed any treaties with the so-called white men. Okay, we've signed treaties. Uh, we've entered into covenants with the white man, as has all other Native American tribes. The Seminole Indian has yet to do that. Okay. I'm going to have to look right? into that. Or, and it, um, also, when it talks about their unstable as water, when you study their history, and understanding their migratory and nomadic behavior throughout the swamps and bayous of Florida prior to it being settled and colonized by the so-called white man. Excellency of their dignity deals with the types of clothes that they adorn themselves in, the jackets, the various crowns, Mitri's hair wraps, things of that nature, right? So other aspects deeper in the history, but just off the top, off of you, off of what you just read, 
those are a few of the ways that we come into the understanding that the Seminole Indian is the tribe of Reuben. Yeah, also they're mentioned by geographical location in, in the book of Revelation. Revelation the seventh chapter. Geographical location, pinpoint accuracy. That's right. And where at? Revelation 7. Let's, let's read it. Revelation 7. Starting at four, uh, mm -hmm. 1 or starting at 4. Revelation chapter 7, uh, verse 4. Uh -huh. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, uh -huh. and there were tw sealed 144,000 of all tribes of the children of Israel. Uh huh. Read on. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Who do we say the tribe of Judah is? Oh, uh, the Negroes of North America. Of North America, right? So this right. is putting us now in North America. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. The Seminole Indian, right? Which Florida, which is in what? North America, right? Go ahead. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. The North American Indian. So we see the three tribes that were in North America were just covered in a geographical sequence, and it'll continue. Read on. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. That's South America, Columbia to Uruguay. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Nephtali. We're still 12,000. We're still 12,000. So Argentina like, and Chile. Now, South America has been covered right there in a geographical sequence. Read on. Of the tribe of Manessa, we're still 12,000. That's going to Cuba. Now we're going to the islands. Read on. Of the tribe of Simeon, we're still 12,000. Simeon, of course, is the Dominicans. You could swim from, from the island that Dominican Republic and Haiti inhabits, which is Hispaniola, to Cuba. Of course, millions of so-called Haitians have done it, right? So we got Cuba, uh, 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 Manessa, Simeon, read. Of the tribe of Levi were still 12,000. You see that? It's only mentioning them in the geographical way that the 12 tribes chart broke down. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Zebulon were still 12,000. Guatemala to Panama, right? Go ahead. Of the tribe of Joseph were still 12,000. Salakia, you skip Issachar, right? Salakia. Go ahead. Of the tribe of uh, Issachar <laughs> were still 12,000. Mexico, read on. Of the tribe of Zebulon were still 12,000. What's on the bottom of Mexico? Guatemala that goes all the way down to Panama, read on. Of the tribe of Joseph were still 12,000. Puerto Rican Island, read on. Of the tribe of Benjamin were still 12,000. You can swim from Puerto Rico to Jamaica. All Let's right. get a most high hand. Let's get a most high hand. Powerful. Hey, Powerful. you ain't going to be able to convince us otherwise until you can do something like that with whatever you purport to be the 12 tribe. Right. You have to be able to take what what I what our claim is and apply them to every prophecy in this Bible with pinpoint accuracy. The way we can. In the spirit. All right. Through the Spirit. Now, uh, before we get off topic, let me continue real quick. Uh, no, yes, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanna... But but hold on, but okay. hold on one second. We no, 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 let's let's wait one second now. Dealing with the let's continue on with the twelve tribes now. Right? Yeah, that's what we're... go ahead, go ahead. Let's go okay. there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, I know you're familiar with this, so we're gonna do Hosea seven and eight. Ephraim he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. What's your understanding on that? The well, if you my understanding is if you take a pancake, right, you leave it on one side and just let it sit there and burn. That. You there, right? You there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. Come, you good? Go ahead, King. Um. So yeah, if if you take a pancake and let it sit and burn on the griddle, is it good or bad once it's burned? Uh, depends on who you are. <laughs> <laughs> you like burnt pancakes? <laughs> some people do. Hey, some some people. That's all we got, brother. It's the scriptures say to roast with fire, brother. <laughs> Hey, well, matter of fact, when I listen, my wife asks me how she want my dinner. I mean, my my breakfast. I tell her char it, all right? Right. Well, okay. Well, to most people, that will be considered bad. Well, that's an opinion. What is that? That's the thing. That's an opinion. Now, what is the fact of what a what a pancake is if you don't turn it? What you mean? What's, what's the fact? If you don't, don't turn it, it'll, is it a fact that one side will be light and one side will be dark? Well, it will not. It'll actually cook through. It'll cook through, huh? 
you'll have the yeah, it will. You'll have a lighter side. I get what you're saying, but okay, it will you'll, have, you'll have a lighter side, right? That's a fact, right? Right. Okay. Boom. So is it illogical for us to deduce that they could be talking about a group of people that varies in hue? Because, of course, the subject matter is they have mixed among the people, right? It's not illogical. Okay. So, like, for example, let's take myself, right? Um, you could call me, quote, unquote, mixed black father, so-called black father, so-called white mother, correct? So many people throughout my life have mistaken me. I've been mistaken for a Latino more than I've been mistaken for anybody else, right? E even yourself, right? Have you ever been mistaken for a Latino before? I had a, a Arab. He thought I was an Arab. <laughs> that's about well, that's Okay, about yeah, it, because 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 there's there's even a similar and physical appearance between uh, uh, Arabs and and Latinos to a degree, right? You've even had. Right. Uh, uh, Latinos portray Arabs in, in, in TV and movies, right? Right. So, with that being said, which we know the Arabs are what? What you mean? Uh, They're mixed, right? That's what the word means. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're mixed. That's why they vary. You see what I'm saying? The same way the Arabs would vary is how it's saying the, the Northern Kingdom would vary, right? So, I want to show you one more thing. Get Ezekiel 37, because this is the understanding that we got to have on it. Go ahead. Huh? Yeah, exactly. All right. Book of Ezekiel 37 and 21. Uh -huh. And saying to them, thus saith Yahweh, uh -huh. behold, I will take the children of Israel. The children of Israel, read on. From among the heathen, uh -huh. whether they be gone, uh -huh. and will gather them on every side read. and bring them into their own land. Uh -huh. And I will make them one nation. One nation, read. In the land uh -huh. upon the mountains of Israel. Uh -huh. And one king shall be king to them all go ahead and there shall be no more two nations no more how many two nations two nations read on neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all so as we see the tribes or the kingdoms of israel are split in two right if we're all negro all 12 tribes are negro we're both kingdoms are negro how are we in this day and age differentiating between each other mm. How are we separating each other? Because this is a last day prophecy, how we would stop being two and become one again. So how yeah. is, if they're all Negroes just in another part of the earth, dealing with this, the, the, the racial concept that the so-called white man has propagated, we're all one, just Negro. We're all Negroes, right? So if that's the case, we're not two. What is this enmity Hamashiach Yahweh Shah is coming to slain? What is this two that's going to be done away with when we are made one again, if we're all the same right now? Well, but that's well. Okay, so are you telling me then that when they when when you have the separation in the kingdoms that we we still look like Negroes and they didn't look like Negroes anymore? Well, uh, I would say that it started then, and I could go to historical references to substantiate it if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. Let me let me see. All right. One second. Okay, here we go. I'm going to screen share it. This is via a book, a historical reference called The Concise History of the Jewish People. And it reads, um, besides the political and ethnic differences between Israel and Judah, there were religious ones. Most with its more diverse population ties with the neighboring Tyree tends to worship Baal alongside that of Yahweh while Judah remained close to Yahweh. So in this uh, reference, it's telling you that there were distinguishable ethnic differences between the two kingdoms, even going back to the time of the split. And then going, of course, here to, to uh, Hosea 7, it would continue. So like when we take a look at um, Aztecs, right, the Aztecs had paintings. When you take a look at the Aztec paintings, you see a variation of dark brown, like a Negro, all the way to a lighter shade of brown, right? Uh, in their kingdom, even pre-colonial uh, colonialization. So we can see how they were mixed and they vary. And it started even going all the way back then. But of course, over the course of time, it progressed. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'd have to, I mean... Uh, as far as the uh, from the you know 
Apocrypha, Second Ezra 13. Read that I'm not getting American. And that's part of the reason why I say that the you know the Hispanics can't be the Northern Kingdom. Because, because you're not getting America out of uh uh which we'll call it uh second Ezra 13. Real quick, we'll deal with that in one second. Let's go to Isaiah 42 though, real quick. 42 and 22. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Isaiah 42 and 22. Read. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Uh-huh. They are all of them snared in holes. Read. And they are hid in prison houses. So let me ask you something. Who are the pre predominant two people that are filling the jails? Uh, blacks and Hispanics. You see that? And as it says, they are hidden prison houses, right? They are robbed and spoiled. Have the Hispanics been robbed and spoiled? Mm, uh, yeah, to a degree. To a degree? Um, j Just a quick FYI. Well, well, I, Spanish I, ships were sinking in the sea because of how much they were stealing from the indigenous right, people of the Americas, right, how had, much gold right. they had. Well, yeah, see, that's why I said to then, yeah, but I'm saying Mexicans now, you know, they have a place they can go to. All the Mexicans where we live around here, so do Haitians. I, hold on, I got a place I could go to, brother. This brother's Bahamian, he got a place he could go to. Jamaicans got a place they could go to. So, are we not Israelites? No, but that's not your home. But wait a minute, if the, the, you didn't bring up being a home. And technically, we can we call it our home. It's our country now, isn't it? I mean, well, yeah. That's well, yeah. When you want to get into the word like indigenous, and that's why I tell people all the time when you say the indigenous people, all that word means is born in. So it, the white man is indigenous to America. He's born in in this country every day. You know. So, right, but I mean, but, yeah, I mean course, again, the question course, is, have they been robbed and spoiled? Right. All right. So they've been robbed and spoiled, and they are hidden prison houses, like it said the Israelites would be, right? And uh, well, I haven't done any uh, recent um, researches on it, but I remember the last time I looked, blacks was, uh, I believe, two, at two point one million in the jailhouse. Yeah, and yeah, and the second right behind it was was the so called Latino. Right. But I don't. If I remember right, I don't think their numbers was up near as high as ours. Um, I can't remember though. But I remember I looked it up. Hey, how many Native Americans died during uh, their con their conquer their conquering? You said what? How many Native Native Americans died during their, their conquering? Uh, so what is it? Seventy-seven million. Is there outside of what happened to the Negro? Is there any even closely relative, like relative, anywhere in that neighborhood of of, of genocide or conquest that has ever occurred to anybody in the world? Well, no, but see, and that's but that's what I, I I believe that the people that were native to this land when Columbus got here, they were all Negroes. Hand mics too. You had hand mics here too. But okay, so if that's the case. Um, even though we have archaeology that could substantiate that, who the hell are the people calling themselves Latinos now? Who are these people? Where do they come from? Those are the children of uh, Spaniards. So th there's there's dark skinned people walking around well, with well, Afro Spaniard children. I say those are the children of Spaniards. I, 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 that, that, I mean, me. that's my question. There's not. Okay, do you know what the term Latino or Hispanic, do you know what the term Hispanic means? And do you know what it denotes? Hispanic denotes a cultural custom, right? right? So under the term Hispanic, you have Spaniards, you have indigenous people, and you have Negroes, right? right. And sometimes you have Chinese, you have the Chinos that, that also will also identify under uh, the Hispanic nomenclature, right? But so we know the Spaniards know who the Spaniards are. And they disassociate yeah. themselves and they are in a higher social caste amongst Hispanic culture than those who are descendants of indigenous or Negro. So there's a clear distinction between the three categories. Right. 
So to say that those people are children of Spaniards, the children of Spaniards are the Spaniards. They are clearly white people. People. That's the question. When I say the children of Spaniards, I mean the the um, the product of rape. And and also when I say that the the twelve tribes are Negroes, I'm not trying to say that there's not gonna be of them that don't look like uh israel that's not what i'm saying at all i, I mean hell you you're gonna have people that uh you know from asia that they look chinese that are gonna you're gonna find out that they israelites you know okay. so i'm i'm not trying to say I, when i say negro i mean negro descendants okay Negroes. which which of course so we whether, agree because if we were all 12 initially negro then of course we're all negroes and we agree with that as well, that all the technically all the 12 tribes are Negroes because we all descend, no matter how you may look today, you descend from a Negro. Right. And, that, and that's what I'm getting at. And But my only thing is that the the large number that that chart will have you believe are, are Israelites. I don't believe that that number is that large as far as the northern kingdom. And Again, why not? You know, well, because the 12 tribes of Negroes. Like, why? Because, okay, let me ask you this. Because you read Yeah, so, so it's about, so I thought it wasn't about looks, now it's about looks again. Well, no, hold on. Because you read in Hosea that Ephraim mixes stuff among the people, right? So mm -hmm. did not Judah do the same? Did we not mix with the other nations? But it wasn't said that it was going to happen like it was said about the Northern Kingdom. So it's clearly singling the Northern Kingdom out as it happening at a larger variance amongst the north which is also why um it did the historical reference i just went to said there was all there was already at the time of the kingdom split a distinguishable ethnic difference between the two kingdoms right okay and that was and what what was that um that you pulled that up on three of the jewish people is the name of the book uh i'm gonna type that in uh I'll look into that for sure. Yeah. Um, well, concise um, last last question. Can you break down Genesis 49 and 13 for me? <laughs> With the end time connotation. Yeah, where we would be at, right? That's what his brother said. Genesis 49. All right, 49 and what? 13? 13. 13. Uh, Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for a haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Yeah, break that, break that down. Well, I know, I know how the camps break it down. I mean, how would you break it down? Well, when you, as far as uh, Zebulun, and when you look at uh, over there in um. In the Middle East, they have a, a a canal also over there. Okay, so who are the black people that are from there? That are from uh, the, where from that overseas, canal is, from the Suez Canal, which is ran by Arabs. Where are the Israelites at? Where are the Israelites? Which uh, over there? We're in captivity. Where? Can you, who are they? Where are the captive black people in the Suez region? Is there any reference? Is there anything you could even relatively produce as evidence to that being the breakdown of that? Uh, I mean, I could try to look something up real quick, but uh, I'll just say no. And then, okay, so no. So then how is their border to Zidane as well? Uh. Well, I, okay, let me ask you then to give me some understanding. Go ahead. No, no, I was saying I, I was uh I was asking you to give me some understanding on it. Oh, okay. You know what? Um, Soldier Baja, report to the front. We're gonna let a we're gonna let a Zebulonite give you the understanding of what this is. Yeah, he can have. It. Go ahead, take you your seat. You gotta give the seat. You gotta serve. Somebody read. Matter of fact, I'll read. I'll read for you. <clears throat> the book of Genesis, forty nine and thirteen. Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea. Oh, hold on. 
uh, you're familiar with the Panama Canal, right? Yeah. Okay, isn't that a haven of ships? Isn't that where the largest import export from the Atlantic to the Pacific is? Get down, brother. And he shall be for an haven of ships. And I just told you the Panama Canal was along with the rest of Central America. Go ahead. And his border shall be unto Zidon. You, you're familiar with the uh, Omex, right? The Hamites? The Omex, yeah. Yeah, they're Zidonians, aren't they? They're the descendants of Zidonians, ain't they? Uh, isn't that where Guatemala would face I, them? I don't, I, don't, I don't know that. But you just said that the 12 tribes are all Negro and... There were Hamites in America. In the Suez Canal, right? Isn't that what you're saying? Correct me if I'm wrong. No. Isn't that what you said, that the Suez Canal is where the Zebulonites would be, right? The, well, that was an example I gave of a, of a canal. And yeah, and but our people... That's, no, uh, that's what you over. said, right? That's what you said. Yeah. But Guatemala <laughs> would face where the Olmecs, who are descendants of the Zidonians, would be. Which would be the start of Zeb of the uh, of where the Zebulonites would face them? No, because this is an end time prophecy. Correct? Am I correct? Yeah, but how do how do we? Is there proof that those are Zidonians down there in South America? Yeah, they they said it themselves. Also, if you look in a when Solomon would send them, when didn't they get shipwrecked? Well, then they said it would be a three year trip to go there and come back. Okay, well, right there in that scripture. When, because it says when they bring to them pe uh, um, peacocks and uh, apes, right? Where right. are peacocks and apes indigenous to? There were there were apes. There were apes in the Americas called the Gigantopithecus. If you look that up. Mm -hmm. Also. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll hey, like, hey, like, like this is my first trip around the block. <laughs> <laughs> so but peacocks. So where are the so where are these Israelites in the Suez Canal? Like the chief priest asked you. Cause I'm showing you these well, people. I, I, these I, people said, I said, right I, said I, I, I said I can. I said I'm. I can't answer that. Okay. So then you tell me where they're at. Then, well, how does it? Where does this prophecy fulfill at? He he, he said he can't answer it. Oh, okay. 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 He All right, digress. Good. Get it. 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 Every question that we pose to you about every breakdown, we could go through clearly, concisely, and answer with multiple precepts, with history, with archaeology, whatever we need to, clearly, concisely, and, and present a very plausible and logical answer. Whether somebody agrees or disagrees, the, lo the, the answer will be plausible and will be logical and will not be without substantial evidence. What has happened in this dialogue is you haven't done any of that, right? So either you are misrepresenting your stances or your stances are without substantial evidence, meaning, it, and you should probably let them go. Just come on no, home. I'll man. just uh, come on. Hey, just come on home, man. <laughs> we got a spot for you right here in Safari, <laughs> man. Come on home and uh, <laughs> let's, let's build this kingdom, man. Let's build this kingdom. And, and and wake up our northern oh last question can you show me one video of some powerful powerful prophets of the lord on the highways and byways in in turkey turkey pergamos no <laughs> turkey <laughs> Wherever the wherever the Most High's children are, they're being raised up in this very hour, and they're hitting these highways and byways, and they're prophesying hardcore. That's right. That's right. Show me that influx. Show me that influx, and, and we'll go from there. But uh, that pretty much wraps things yeah, up. I we mean, could see, we could see them in the Americas. We could see them in South and West Africa. You see them. It's even some in South Africa. But I don't see them over there. But go ahead. Uh I mean, I give you a hand. I give you a hand, brother. Brother, hand, man. Brother, brother hand. He ain't um, no punk. He ain't emotional. All right. A lot of niggas is emotional punk. His brother's not one of them. Right, right, right. Yeah, you, you had the courage and the balls. 
Oh, and, and, and enough humility if he didn't say, look, I didn't know or, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Nah. That's that's something that's rare in this world of niggas that's feeling they damn self right. on the Internet. Go ahead. Not prideful. I mean, you and Eric, you and Eric are the same way. You guys are respectable. I appreciate that about you guys. Um, but with that, we're going to close it out, brother. And say when was 125th Street. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's where sure. the breakdowns came from, baby. But go ahead. Uh, we're going to close it out. Uh, I'm going to say. Uh, All praise you. How about some y'all was shy? And Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.